Hello everyone, welcome to yet another important video. In today's important video, we are going to see uh, the tableau scenarios that were asked in the light and uh, user ready and uh, there's also one company. So what are we going to you know solve in this video? We are going to solve some interesting you know, questions that are also part of real time. Not only these questions are important from interview perspective, but also these are imp uh, important from real time implementation because we implement or use this kind of uh, situations very frequently. So practice this kind of situations so that you know you can uh, attempt questions in interview and also do it with ease in your real time. So the first question is finding your first and last order sales. And second one is finding current week and previous week sales and coloring each measure separately. These are something that we are going to solve today. So without wasting much time, let us get started. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See here, how to color each measure in different uh, color, okay? Or yeah, so see what happens is in real time, we might have multiple measures that we want to use and we might you know, need to create custom calculations for all of that. So as a part of that, I'm trying to recreate you know a view with multiple measures and i'm taking whatever we have like say profit i'm taking i'm taking sales and uh, i'm taking i'm also taking quantity okay so but we want a cross tab here so i'm just converting it into text tables or you can directly use measure names and a measure values to get this so till here, it is pretty much clear. Now, when I say, you know, how to color each measure in, a, in different colors, generally what we do is, like say, we use sum of profit on color. If I use sum of profit on color, what happens? With respect to sum of profit, all of my other measures are also acting, right? So they are also getting colored, but that is something that is not something that we would like to do, right? So I'm just removing that. The second attempt that many of us do is simply take this measure name, hold your control button, take measure name and drop it on color. Now this is your one type of solution where you are coloring them differently in different colors. Like say on the right side, if you see three different colors, fine. The user might be okay with this, but always remember, we are trying to color our measures, right? So they also need to have that pattern which tells, you know, which is increasing or which is decreasing or if at all you are really interested in showing that, you know, the color opacity to that, then the second method would be take your measure values and drop it on color shelf. Now see here, it is trying to color measure values here, right, based on the value, but we want Tableau to use different color palettes here. So you can simply click on this and you can click on use separate legends. Now this will create three separate legends for each of the measure that we have. Like how we usually see for a measure when we drop it on color shell. So same way it is trying to behave. Like the lower the value, lower is the color concentration. Higher the value, higher is the concentration. So like that you can use and you can view it in your dashboard one very important use case for real-time implementation second is how to get first and last order date sales in the entire data set now sometimes client might be very much interested in finding when did he had his first sales or when did he has his last sales so now see here we have sales from 2018 Till 2021 right but if i am going to convert this into exact date to see what are our individual order dates then you will see that on 3rd of january we had our first order right and on maybe some december 30 2021 we had last order now client is interested in knowing or seeing this now this question can be customized at a year level like say customer or client might want first and last order in each year then how will you do he in each month he might want how will you do 
okay so the concept will remain same let us try to do that uh what i'm trying to do is i'm just trying to use or create a, a calculated field here min order date now can someone guess which type of lod we need to use here okay so pause the video and comment if you are you know you know the answer here so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to use a table scoped lod because in this situation we need a minimum order date in the entire data right so i'm just clicking on min of order date so i'm just closing my bracket here okay so if i just take this and drop it on this what are we getting? We are getting minimum order date for my entire data set. Likewise, I'm just trying to match this with my order date. If my order date is equal to min of order date, which means what only in this first order date or only for this first order date, my case will become true. Otherwise, it will become false. Let us see that also. So I'm just going to copy the entire thing and drop it here. See, only the first one is becoming true. Okay, like that we can do this and uh, I'm going to apply. Okay, and I'm going to take sales as well. I got sales for that particular thing. I'm going to remove this and this. Now, if I drop minimum order date into filter shelf and take only true, we are getting that. Same likewise, if I need a maximum, I can simply use the Let us see if it works together and I'm just trying to use max here. So we'll get the last order date. So before we do that, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to take this and I'm trying to drop it here and I'm going to remove this. So everything is false here so the last one is becoming true okay let us see what is the result we will get if i if we use both of them together and i'm going to take this and i'm considering only true one we are getting minimum order date and we are getting maximum order date that way also we can do or you can create individual calculations for your minimum order date and maximum order date now what we can do is you can try to create or find a minimum uh, or first and last sales in each year try to do it and let me know if you face any issues or you can comment in the comment section let us see how many of us will be able to you know solve this type of question you just need to enhance the existing logic and you can try okay so i'm writing it here and so third scenario is very frequent in terms of real-time implementation we do want to compare our sales we do want to see how much of sales we have in our current week we do want to know how much of sales we had in our previous week and we might do you know a calculation or a comparison on the growth and all so for that the base is how are we calculating the current week and previous week so what i'm doing is i'm taking you know order date and it has till 2021 so just to get data till the current year what i'm doing is i'm using a date add function and just writing my calculation as current year and i'm just doing date add i want to add year part and I want to add two years so that I can get to three and I'm just uh, using order date. Apply. Okay, so if I use, I'm just converting this into date part. I don't want time. So I'm just converting that. And if I use it here, I'm getting data till current year. 
okay now i'm going to use this calculation to find out current week okay i'm just duplicating this and maybe i'll convert this into week format here or maybe week number whatever and i'll just make it uh, discrete okay i need a week number here and uh, not this so i'll just say week number oh, yep now we need to find out current week okay so i'm writing current week and uh, previous week sales okay if sorry date diff of so we need i'm directly using date difference of which part we need we need week part right so i want to separate my week from my uh, current year and today okay so today is the function that will return today's date okay no matter whenever you are trying to opening if it is today it will show you 2022 05 and 2023 likewise if you are opening tomorrow it, it is going to show you may 2023 okay so i'm trying to find out week number here for that and i'm going to find out difference for this so let us see what is the difference it is showing here and uh, I'm just dragging and dropping it here. I'm just going to convert this into discrete. And uh, I don't want this to get aggregated. Maybe I need to convert this here. Now let us see, let us go to 2023. So now if you see here, we are currently in week 2021. So the difference for that is zero. And if I go to one week above that, we are getting one here. So we need to consider only this week. Current week is zero, previous week is one. But because we have data which is future data, we are getting some data in negative values which we need to ignore or eliminate them with our calculation. So there is a probability that we might have a future dates or we might not have but we still need to be prepared to handle this type of situations in real time so what i'm doing is in i want only zero comma one so you can write this in multiple ways like you can write less than or equal to one greater than you know like that all of that you can use and you can do but i found this very simple and easy and you can do that so click on apply ok and if i take this and drop it on filter shelf and consider this so i got only those current week and previous week and i can simply take my sales we got sales for our current week and our previous week that way i can do okay so i hope you found this video useful if it does don't forget to like share and subscribe and give it a thumbs up see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day